Right, we job on this today, a wee Suzuki LT50. Still a few of these gone about. This, I think this one's 20 odd year old. Right, rear hub, well, I suppose you could call it hub bearings, drive shaft bearings. There's a fair bit of, plus that, uh, they hubs, the wheels are hanging off. But you can see, you can see it I'll get this on the stand. That's a better angle, just looking there. Fair bit playing that. The other side. This was actually in for not running, well, non starting. Now I'm going for a new carburetor to it. It's one of the cheap Chinese things that's on it. I'm getting the, the original. And when I've got that off, I've got the chain and sprockets. Hey, it's got to be exhaust blow. Get that done. I found a new carburetor. I go out going like, but the carburetor was flooding. Just cheap rubbish, honestly. Right, let's see what's first with this. Right, I'll whip the wheels off. The only thing I've done to this is turn the plastics off. It's just just a couple of bolts each side. Puts that on. Right, off with the wheels. Hey, right, just a thought with this. Instead of taking the actual wheel nuts off, I'm going to take the, the actual hub nut off and just pull the whole lot off. Because that nut's slack anyway. The whole wheel's hanging off. Yeah, I got the split pin out. That's actually just finger tight. That should be tucked up. I would imagine. Right. So that's that big washer. That washer. Pull that off. Yeah, it's just a spline. So that should be tucked up. Oh. Yeah. Right. That's straightforward so far. For this, is it just some sort of shield? Right, brake shoes will be hiding in there. Right, so what are we doing now? Let's see. Now, I've never done one of these before, so I'm just using some more mechanical. Initiative, that's what it's called. Right, slacking this off. That's your lever for the what makes a handbrake work. Not handbrake, so that. That's what the handbrake. Right, slacking this off. It'll be interesting to see what's hiding behind here. Right, that's take that spacer off. Little tap of the hammer. Is that going to come off? I've got this rest around about my jacks I use for the bikes, which is quite handy and it's quite stable as well. You see the grub on it about the, the deck. You see that right? Is that in focus?
right. So far so good. A fair bit of crap in there. Just put that out there. Yeah, you should be able to see that play now. Dinky wee shoes. Right, I'll get these shoes off. They're just two springs. Right, a better view of the shoes here before I take them off. Right, that's sure. You've got a sort of cam effect there. Yeah. And when you pull the brake, that just turns that. That's just similar to the uh, the motorbike ones, the old jump brakes in the back. Obviously that would be linked up to your your brake pedal. So that's straightforward enough. Just off of them. As the brake shoes off, that was just a case of leaving that one up and pulling it out. Right, so that's that. Let's see that better as well, look at that. Right. It might be an idea if I'd give this a, a power wash first and get rid of that crap. A bit late now. Right, what's next? There's... That looks like a captive. Right, it'll be a case of getting these little nuts off at the back. They look a bit of a 12mm. Right, it looks like there's just the two 12mm nuts holding that. I suppose you could call that the, the brake shoe back plate. So, I scraped some of the mud off as well. Get the bolt straight in the plastic box so I didn't lose anything. Just to I should really put the two in the middle. Right. right, that's where the bearing is in there. So I can see. Right enough, I've got to drive out the other side. Just be like then. Pool bearings. I would imagine you'd be able to slip that right in. Maybe. Right, on at the other side. Right, it's just off of this. Out the split again. Seems to be a battery job. Okay, so it's exactly the same that side. This came off a bit easier. That tube. 
Il suicidio. Box for the seat, so then it gets things mixed up. I keep all my sorries. Ice cream tubs, margarine tubs, any sort of plastic tub. Yeah. Doesn't cost you anything. Oh, look at that. Thing is, obviously, with them, then that's been slack. That's going to sort of take the preload off it burns like that. Yeah. Right, they're too far gone for that. Right, I'm going to take the wee chain guard off. Let me see, let's hug it that on. That plastic, yep. So you've got... A couple of ten mils. Yeah, and yeah, right, I'll get that whipped off. That was right, my thinking there, you could just pull that right out. Right, so what I'll do is take the split link out the chain, and I'll start getting this side casing off. And I'll be able to, now, gain access to the, the exhaust, because we've got to blow the the... Ooh, my back's itchy. <laughs> I blow the exhaust down pipe. I still revert it when I'm talking about cars. Like what you call it, this. The exhaust pipe. Throw <laughs> your technical fuck out there. Right, that looks like a heat shield to come off there first. Which is be 8mm. That's a long one. Screw up there. That's obviously going right through the casing, right through the engine. That long one. Right, I'll get my. Oh, that's tight. Driver. Off of that. Right, how that the heat shield on you got a bit. Protective foil there. Right. Another. There's just another eight mil holding that. Pull start on. Hopefully it'll not go twang when I take that off. Like my new watch, Santa brought me. See, we've got my bike on it. Look at that. What a sad man. Right. <laughs> right. And call. I think 
think I'll cable tie that out of the way. I'm not wanting that flopping about. Hey, I'm going to have to see if this splits, if that's two. I'm not very sure if that's one piece. Of. I think it is. Right. I'll get the rest of the 8 millimetres. There you go, that's starting to come off as soon as I slacken that bottom one off. I thought it would keep the chain on and out, just let you see that the front sprocket might be easier just to keep the chain on to slacken the, the bolts off or might be held on with a clip or something. Ah, it's just a set clip. So, I could actually just put it back in there. Nice, I've got pliers. next door. A bit light in the subject helps. Now that should just pull out there now. Right, right. There you go. Make that chain seem better, dear. What do you think? That should be easy enough. Well, that even comes up. Here. That should be easy enough to take them off. I'll give them a, a bit of soak with WD-40. Try making things a bit easier. Right. These bearings. Now, that's a wee sort of bearing carrier there. So what I'll get it there, I'll take that right off. Oh, <laughs> what's that? I don't know. It's like somebody eating a carrot. Right, right, the wee bearing carrier, what we want to call it. We've got another four 12 millimeter bolts holding that on, and you've got the wee cable. Let's see how that comes off. That's gonna, gonna have to take all that right off to pull that out. Right, I'll get them slackened. Forgot all about that, I've just noticed that. There's how you adjust the the chain. These no. that's pretty straightforward. Right, that's the wee adjusters off the bottom. No, I'll give them a good clean up before they get put back on. See that, yeah, that's where it goes. Right, that's no far away from 
coming off. I've got them slackened. Right, there's just the one bolt holding that on. I think. So it's causing other problems. The bearings are totally and utterly knackered. Right, I'll give this a good clean up and I'm going to have to knock the bearings out. Right, first thing is out of the seal. Should just pop it. Right, good. Two bearings. Yeah. There's a close up of the bearings. What's left of them? Now right, I'm just trying figure out the best way to do this. I think I'll I'll clamp it in here. Move this back a bit. Gently clamp it there. Right in between the two bearings you've got a, a spacer. stick Nope. I could do it get that spacer moved across any sort of give on that at all. Another method is to break the that cage. You break the cage in there, then move the balls to the side, then start to get that inner track out. That's one. Right, I'll see if I can get the camera. Right, yeah. doing something like this, you have to watch because burns. It can come off at a million miles an hour. Wear safety goggles. Right, so. Usually get the metal cage once it starts breaking you can grab it with a pair of pliers and sort of unwind that wee bit. There you go, that's how it coming out, see that? Right, okay. Pliers. Find side cutters a bit for this. Yeah, 
sometimes it can be a wee bit ugly. You just have to keep on doing that. Then some like this, you have to be patient, and you can't just. cage it's all sort of rivet that's all right buddy. What you try to do here is get the all the balls you pardon the expression run to one side, then you can get that in our track, tilt it up and pull it out. Getting there, I think. There's another bit. That's about the cage there. You can of really use one of the expanding hey, bearing pullers came with a slight hammer on this because you've not got a, a step in sight. I've got one of them like but we're getting there. There's another bit. Mm-hmm. 
much slow some. This has to be. This will not work if if that all the balls have to be close together. There's a bit of cage there, see that. I think it's bigger bearings. I think it's probably a bit easier. It's like pulling teeth. <laughs> I would imagine. My battery doesn't go flat my phone. Oh, there's a big bit there. This is exciting stuff like this. I done a rear rear wheel bear another day on a was he wheel like small one two five and the the bear had totally collapsed the cage had disappeared in fact I probably still got that bear lying about. Right, there's no far away now. Right, there you go. Yeah. Okay, 
it gets to the stage where that get that in focus where you can push that across there and that way you can get that spacer out I'll probably better turn it the other way move this back a wee bit So that's the spacer. So that way now you can get into the other bearing. No, I just know it's a problem. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I don't know where to be the other day. Right, I'll get a drift for that. There's an old stub pin from something, a job i done years ago. So in with that. Watch the fingers. Right, now the problem I've got here is I was thinking once I've got that space out I could have knocked that out but you've got a step inside right so what I'll do there hopefully is put the, the old bearing back in with some of the balls which are all uh, rolling about the floor. <laughs> right, I'll see if I can find some. Right, what I'm looking to do is get this other bit of the bearing out. I've got the... managed to find some of the old wall bearings. I've stuck them on there with grease and I'm going to space them out. I know this seems a sorry, long way about to do things like, but this is... So, I'll get that in there. And just space just space some of the the ball bearings back out hopefully And that should be enough just to hold that for me to knock that out. So that's basically sorry back together again. Right, I'll turn that over. I'll just keep that going and let me see if this is gonna work. Probably could have done with more ball bearings in there. It'd be better maybe if I pressed that out. Just thinking that. Draw press, so I'm going to try it without drift. Okay, and this is things you won't be able to do in your own garage, it's not everybody's got a 10 ton hydraulic press. I can feel it coming, just watch my fingers.
that's it. Amazing. There you go. Right, that's me done with that now because I'm waiting on parts. Parts will be a couple of days. So I'm going to have to get this workshop tied up a wee bit. I've got. That's another CRF I've gotten. That's getting a major facelift. That's a Polaris Predator 500. That's an engine rebuild. That's my KX500. I've decided to strip the engine in that. <laughs> so I don't think there's enough compression just as well because of the piston. I might as well just show you this while I'm here. The piston is starting to pick up a wee bit. I'm going to have to get replayed as well. And the I may as well get that done. So I think I'll video that. That all in shockers need an overhaul too. I'll do that. I'm in the middle of getting uh, the the gas for it, so I'll be able to regas shockers. These things that are there have been lying there a year now since I moved in. That that's a uh, a video I'll be doing. I started that. I've I've done that from scratch. That's a 1985 XL125. That's work in progress, obviously. Right.